Good morning, church. We're so glad to be with you this morning and worshiping together. It's a great day to be together. So we just pray that you are doing well, that you're you're doing okay. Hey, we want to hear from you too. Uh, you know, it's kind of lonely this time. It's kind of weird not being around each other. So we want you to comment really quick, like where you're at right now. Like it's weird, you know, if, I, if you're outside, you know, we've heard about people being on their patio. It's beautiful weather lately. So, uh, you know, Type in the, in the comments if you're if you're outside, if you're in the kitchen, whatever you're doing. We want to hear from you, so just comment maybe what your favorite movie that you've been watching lately or the music you've been listening to, whatever you're doing to pass the time, any new fun quarantine tricks that you've got. We want to hear about it, so make sure you're commenting, sharing, whatever it is. Uh, we just want to hear from you guys. We miss you all. But uh, this morning, let's just worship together. God is worthy to be praised, and so we're going to do that this morning, all right? Let's go. Again, we're so glad to be with you, and we are excited just to, to be able to worship together. You know, God is at move. God's at move. God's at work. God's moving, but God's doing great some, great some great things, and that's another thing. We'd love to hear from you. What is God speaking to you right now? What is God doing in your life? And we're just coming together this morning just to worship Him and just to rely on Him and, and what it is He wants to speak to us this morning. So right now, we're just going to worship together. We're going to just declare those things over our life. Father God, we just thank you that you're in this place. God, wherever people are watching this or listening to this, God, it says in the Bible that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in our midst. Lord God, even over the internet, even over video right now, we are joining together to worship you. So God, we believe that you're in our midst. So Father, speak to us this morning. Lord God, move in this place, move in our hearts. And God, we just want to hear from you this morning. We love you. We praise you. Every 
church. I don't know about you, but I think this is super encouraging when we think about the fact that he is a solid foundation. We can build our lives around him. That his love is unfailing. That's a foundation that we can build on because we know it's always solid. It's always there. It's consistent. It's different than the world, what the world says is a constant thing put our hope and trust in something in this world and we know that it can easily be taken away and easily go away. Just knowing that God does not do that. We serve a God that is faithful. And wherever you're at right now, let's just take the next couple moments as worship for that. Just thank Him for, for being constant, for being reliable, for being a living God just a living God that's that's there, but a living God that we can call out to with our needs, we can call out to with our praise, and we can build our entire life on it. There's so many other things that we can try to build our life on in this world, but nothing is firm like the foundation of Christ. Church, let's sing this out. Oh, praise the name.
your mercy, God, and who, just who you are, Lord. God, you're such a great God, such a powerful God. God, we could sit, we could think about all the, the amazing things that, that you've done. God, the fact that you're alone, you are, you are matchless, Lord God. There's none like you, Jesus. And we just thank you so much we can come before you this morning worship you and praise you, Lord God, because you alone are worthy. We thank you for this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your people, God. Be with this church, Lord God. Be with this community, God, as we continue to walk through, God, what this, this time is. God, continue to move, continue to work inside of us. Jesus, speak to us wherever we're at right now. We love you and we thank you for this day. In the name of God. Everybody, how you doing? I'm standing here in the parking lot of the Imagine the Theater in Monticello, and this is the site for our National Day of Prayer gathering this year. We are joining with pastors and churches from all across our area to pray on May 7th, the National Day of Prayer. It's going to be, again, right here. Uh, we're going to do this together. You can sh show up uh, and pray from your car. We're going to do it via Zoom, and so you can sign up for this. If you go to our Facebook page, there's instructions there on how to sign up. There's more information there. Please go there. And of course, too, if you don't can't come out, you don't want to come out here on that day, you can also participate from your home or your office or wherever you want to participate from. 
uh, you just need to sign up first and we'll be, you can be a part of it like anybody else does. And so, hey, again, th- it is so critical for us to pray and never more so than right now. So, man, I would love if you would join us on May 7th, Thursday morning, this Thursday morning, right here to pray together. Let's ask, let's pray for God's glory to come in this region. Amen? We'll see you then. Hey guys, thank you for all of your quarantine commercial submissions. They were all fantastic. Shh, what happened? Did you see this? I didn't see anything. You said you didn't want it. I didn't then, but now I do. Okay. It was a really hard vote, but we finally have a winner. Shh. I'm Boz North, and I'm here to sell you the new Sledgematic series. For those who like to juice it, I highly recommend the mini Sledgematic. One swing of this bugger, and you will have an instant glass of orange juice or lemonade. And I will show you how easy this is. Voila! Mmm, is that going to be good orange juice? Next up, what we have up is the tweener, the tweener sledge matic If you're on the keto diet and you want to go low carb, nothing says low carb like a good old fashioned salad. Here we go. Salad, anyone? Next up, for those of you that might be planning a big party like a graduation party, we have the ultimate sledge matic This baby can do more than you would ever imagine. Right here we have a watermelon. This guy could feed 20, 30 people easy. No more spending time in the kitchen. With one swing, you are good to go. Fruit, anyone? Folks, you can get all three of these Sledgematic babies for $19.95. The mini, the tweener, and the ultimate. $19.95. And that's not all. You buy today from us and we will throw in a free COVID-19 mask. Homemade, made in America, can't beat it. My favorite is the mini. Operators are standing by. You might have heard them in the background even. This is Boz North and I will see you at the State Fair. Hey, good morning, good morning. Man, what a good day to have you with us here today at church. Man, it's a beautiful day today, I, I think. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be a wonderful day anyway uh, to serve the Lord together. And uh, man, I'm excited about this. We've been walking through the book of Joshua for this entire time. And, and I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed uh, speaking on it. I've enjoyed studying and working towards this. And there really are so many incredible parallels between Joshua's life uh, and the life of Israel as they moved into the promised land and really where we are nowadays. Because just like God worked in Joshua... And the people of Israel to bring them into a new time, a new place, a new season, a new blessing. God wants to do the same thing in you and me today, right? A a running theme we've kind of had throughout this entire series is God wants to do more now than he ever has in our lives. And that's not just fluff. That's true. It's always true, right? It's, it's always, always how it works. We're, we're going from glory to glory, as the Bible says. There is never, we've never reached the end of what God can and what God wants to do in our lives. Till the day that you're, you're gone, till the day that you die, you are a work in progress. And that is good news. And your spouse just probably elbowed you and said amen to that. But anyway, just like Joshua and the people of Israel, God has made promises in our lives. But uh, these, these promises are, are good, and, but they're not always automatic, Right? They're not always things. There's, there's, there, there's, 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 there's going to be a river to cross, or there's going to be a dividing line of challenge to go through. So God's given promises. Those promises are ours. They're, they're yes and they're amen, as the Bible says. 
But they're not always just the automatic thing. We sometimes have to walk through something to get there. And so that's really, again, what the book of Joshua <laughs> walks through. Not only did they have to walk across the Jordan River, there was many things that they had to do that God put them on this kind of precipice, this edge of blessing, but they had to walk through something. And so today we're talking vision. And more specifically, spiritual vision and how that is such a critical piece in us being able to realize the promises that God has to us. And one big thing, one big key to crossing into that place of blessing is to be able to see what God sees. We're going to see that today in Joshua chapters 5 and 6. So if you would, open your Bibles today to Joshua 5 and 6. But first, before we even get to that part, I want to read Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says this, Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. That's a pretty well-known passage of Scripture. Uh, what do you think the enemy would love for us to do? He'd love for us to cast off restraint, right? See, to illustrate what that, what that is, uh, years back, and I've talked about this before, but it bears repeating now, years back when I uh, messed my knee up while snowboarding for the first time, I cast off restraint, Right? I was doing things um, that on a snowboard, on a jump, that I had no business of doing. I, I was wanting to impress the people around me watching me. And so normally, uh, you would, when you hit a jump, you'd kind of carve and you control your speed and such. I just went gangbusters for it because I wanted to get as high and I wanted to hit it as hard as I could. Now, I had no idea because I had never done a jump like this before. I had no idea what was coming. So I had no idea that uh, of the height I was going to get. The, I had no idea the pain that was going to happen once I hit the ground. I had no idea uh, how tearing my knee up was going to affect so much of my life. I, I had no idea. If I could have seen that, right, if I could have seen what was going to happen— then the truth is, I would have restrained myself. And so, see, that's what this kind of talks about here. If the people can't see, the people don't have vision like God has, well, they throw off restraint. They, they, they just do whatever. And again, until God graciously healed my knee, that day affected me so much. And it was just a couple moments of casting off restraint. And, and I, I love how the message paraphrases this verse. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, right, they stumble all over themselves. If they can't see what's going on, if they can't see what God's doing, then the vision like God has, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals— when they listen, right, when they do what he's told them to do, when they do that, they are blessed. They are blessed. When they see what God's doing, when they listen to his voice in that case, they're blessed. Now, I don't know about you, but in this season of my life, in this time, in this moment, I want to walk in blessing. Is God working right now? Yes. Is God working tomorrow? Yes. Is God working consistently in our life? A, a million times, yes. I want to be able to see what God sees. Right? I, I want to I do that. I don't want to cast off restraint. And so my big question for you today, I want you to think about this. Can you see what God is doing in your life right now? Think about that. Can you see what God's doing in your life right now? Because the question is never this. The question is, is God doing something in my life? That's not the question. That question is crazy because he is, right? If you're a believer, especially if you're a believer, God is doing something, right? So the question is not, is he doing something? The question is, what is God doing right now in your life? See, I'll have a moment of honesty with you. There have been times in my life when I would have answered that question, I'd love to know. I, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't know what he's doing right now. I don't know what, what, what's, what's going. And see, oftentimes in those moments, the, the answer to that question that God was leading me to was some line of faith. 
some line of action. He was taking me to some spot that I had to walk across, that I had to go through, and in order to, to, to live in the promise that he was bringing me to, I had to walk across some dividing line. And, and those are the times in my life when God has done something in my life, but I've had to do that. Why? Because I've learned God's always doing something in my life. And the same thing is for you. Now, you might be in a season right now where you say, I, I don't really know. I, I don't really see what God is, is doing. And that's really what I want to walk through and talk through today. Because this is really, in so many ways, where Josh and the people of Israel are. We find them in chapters 5 and six, because this is a key to our problem. See, sometimes we can see and yet not be able to see. Now, you might look at that and say, what in the world are you talking about? We could see and not be able to see. Yeah, there's, there's times in our lives when we can see things, but not yet be able to see. I, I used to wear contacts, and I, I don't anymore. I, I've had glasses or contacts really since I was in fourth grade. Uh, a couple of years back, I got LASIK, and so that's been great, and so I don't have that problem anymore. But for, for years, I struggled with that concept where I could see things, right? But I wasn't really able to see. There was, there was one time when I was playing softball, and it was early summer, and, and I have allergies too. So my allergies were kind of going crazy. It was out in the field. There was a bunch of weeds around us, and so my, my allergies were going nuts, and, and so my eyes are, are watering. It was just really, really difficult. So I was standing out in an outfield, it was the first inning. I was in the outfield, and my eyes are watering, so I rub my eyes, and one of my contacts pops out. So one stays in, one pops out. Now, I've got a big problem in that moment. If you wear glasses or contacts, you might be able to relate. I, I, I had one in, one out, and so I could see with one eye, and yet I couldn't see with the other eye, right? And so because of this, I, I didn't want to talk about it. I, I didn't want to tell people, hey, I, you know, hey, Mike can't see now. I don't want to make excuses. So I just kept going. And so with one eye, I try to like close the bad eye, keep the good eye open. So with one eye, I'm trying to play the game. And so I remember a ball was hit to me. Now, I, I was not like the greatest player on the planet, but I was a decent player. I, I could hold my own. Um, I, I would catch things pretty well, and so I was, I was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, fa pretty easy to, to, to hit to. I, I'd, I'd catch things, and, and so I, I, I closed my one eye and kept my one eye open, but my depth perception was completely off. And so this ball is coming to me. It was, a, it was an easy pop fly, and I could still kind of see it, right? And it's coming to me, and because I have no depth perception, I see the ball— Yet I can't see what it's doing, and the ball goes right over my head, right? And it's like, it was embarrassing. And the ball goes back, and so I'm running towards it and throwing it back in, and I completely missed the cutoff guy. And it was awful, and so I was, just, I was just bad. And then it got worse when I got to play, up to, to hit. Again, I, was, I could hit decently. Uh, certainly in softball, in church softball, when the ball is like a giant pumpkin they throw at you, it's hard to miss that. I struck out three times that day. And there is the, 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 four, or the, the other time, I luckily made contact, but it was just a little squibbler in the front of the plate. Now, that was all I could do. It was, it was awful because I'm trying to keep one eye closed and one eye open. My death perception is off. And again, though, I could see, but I couldn't see. I, I, I wasn't blind, but I couldn't see what was really happening. See, people can have God working all around them. They can have God doing things in, in their life, in the life of their family, in, I mean, all, in all kinds of places, and, and they can see the effects of this sometimes, but yet they can't really see what he is doing. And the truth is that what you see can even play tricks on you, right? It can play tricks on you depending on your sight problem. Because the truth is that some of us have spiritual sight problems, right? So maybe you might find that you are, you're, you're spiritually nearsighted. 
You can only see things that are right in front of you. You, 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 you have long-term, uh, you, have, you have no long-term vision. You, you can't see down the line. So you can see it, it's right here. God's doing this. Hey, today I got to get up. I got to go to church. I, I, you know, we're going to do this. And you're faithful in that, but yet you can't see things in the future. You're spiritually nearsighted. It's hard for you to make a connection between today and tomorrow, the next day and the next day, even though God consistently does that. It's important for you to consider not just today, but what's coming in the future. If you're spiritually nearsighted, or you might be spiritually farsighted. You can see, you can see off the future. You have all kinds of vision for the distant. The distance seems clear, but what up, up, it, what's up front is very hard for you to see or even impossible. Maybe you might Say, well, then someday we'll be in heaven, right? Someday we're going to get to heaven as all will be behind me. And so what happens today is of little value to me. Wrong. It's just wrong. Yes, heaven's coming. But we are here today. And what we do today matters for the future, not only for our lives, but for those that are around us. See, if you think that way, you might say, well, I'm going to heaven someday, so that doesn't matter what I do, to, do now. And, and that's true. You may, get yourself, you may get to heaven someday. You may be saved and you know, you know Jesus, but there could be other people around you that you are affecting with that attitude, and they may not because you have made the decision that someday matters, but not today. How I live today is of little consequence. Someday I'll, I'll give, right? Someday I'll serve. Someday I'll have time for something else. Someday, and maybe that's even like, you know, someday when I get back, we get back and coronavirus is over, then I'll serve, then I'll give, then I'll help, then those things happen, but not today. But see, friend, this, today I, I want to encourage you, that's spe being spiritually farsighted and it's not balanced. Someday I'll, I'll spend more time with my family, but today I've got to work, or today I've got to spend time doing this, and someday maybe I'll, I'll help. You're, you're spiritually farsighted. And, and you think you can see down the road, but I, I'll be honest with you today. If this is you, it's attending to what God do, is doing now that opens the door to what God will do in the future for you, right? See, this is a problem as well. Maybe you're, you're spiritually colorblind. You can, you can see... You can see things in black and white, but you do not see color. You can't see nuance. You can't see the, the, the uh, you don't have the ability to walk in wisdom and understanding. You see, wisdom is being able to take knowledge and apply knowledge, right? And you may have a ton of spiritual knowledge. You may know a lot of things, and everything is very black and white to you, and you're proud of that. Now, I'm not saying that truth is not black and white and gray. Don't, don't misquote me here, okay? I, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying, you know, you need to see gray because truth is not, no, no, truth is black and white. But it's not a matter of spirit, uh, it's a matter of your spiritual vision. You, you see, but you see without wisdom and discernment. So, for instance, you see your neighbor or your child or your mom or your dad or someone, your coworker, you see that they're doing things that are, that are just wrong. They're, they're, they're sinful or they're wrong. They're, they're, there's a problem there. And, and to fix this, you feel called to swat them with the Bible, right? You're like, God says this, and you, you swat them with the Word of God, which is something they don't believe anyway, right? And so they don't believe that anyway, and so you swat them, and you hit them hard with the Word of God, thinking that that's going to help. But the problem is, you see you have spiritual color blindness. You, you see the truth, but you don't see how to walk the, with the truth in wisdom and understanding. You see, but you can't see. Because if your communication of the truth to them is something that actually won't help them, all it's going to do is just frustrate them and dread them further. And you have no care. You have no love. You have no compassion. You have no understanding. You don't take into consideration the, the surroundings of what they're going through, what they're talking that, and trying to communicate the gospel through those lenses, you're spiritually colorblind. Maybe you might have spiritual tunnel vision. You, you don't have any peripheral vision. You see one thing, right? You see one area, one area in you, one area in your spouse, one area in your kids. 
right? One area in the world. You see one thing, and you have this tunnel vision, and you cannot see the, the big picture, right? You can't see around you. You can't see other things. You have spiritual tunnel vision. Vision is absolutely a critical thing. To be able to see what God sees and see how God sees is incredibly important. You see, because a champion is a person that has developed spiritual 2020 vision. Now, now how do we do this? We're going to see this in Joshua chapters 5 and 6. And so to do this, though, today, I, I want us to, to be able to see right? What Joshua was seeing in this point. So we're going we're gonna to go to a, a wall and see a wall much like what Joshua would have seen. So let's go take a look at that right now. Joshua chapter 6 verses 1 through 2. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see I've given Jericho into your hand with its king and its mighty men of valor. So Joshua might have seen something like this at this moment. He might have been, been faced with this, this wall, this, this impenetrable situation that could not be, be done. And, and, and it made really no sense, to be honest with you, that he is here. And, and now they're, they're walking and they're standing in front of this. Now these two verses here are in a stark contrast. The first one is what Joshua sees with these physical walls. It's, it's Jericho. It's their, 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 their rock, their granite. Their, they're difficult to walk through. And they're here and it's strong. And this is a tough spot for them to be in. And what he sees when he sees this first verse is he sees that it seems pretty impossible. But then the next verse is, is again the contrast. And so let's read it again. The Lord said to Joshua, see I've given Jericho into your hand. Sometimes what we see in the physical can be really discouraging because it's here, right? It's not like he could say, well, it's not really there. It's there. He can touch it. He can feel it. What, it's, it's standing between him and the promise of God. It's this big giant wall. But then God says, see, I've given it into your hands. And see, the wall is not untrue. And that wall can be really discouraging. But, and that's just what the enemy would like to have happen. Remember what our verse earlier said, if people can't see what God's doing, they fall all over themselves. Now, now listen today, if we're ever going to see victory, we must learn to see things with spiritual vision. Even things like a giant wall, that seems impossible. Sometimes that giant wall is between us and, and, and God's promise being fulfilled. Even in those times, we have to see those things with spiritual vision. How in the world are they ever going to see victory? Now there's three things from this passage here that reveal to us that Joshua was able to see this with spiritual vision. I want to read the whole verse to you, or the whole, the whole story to you, what he saw when he came up to this wall. I, I want to read this for you today. We're going, to, we're going to pull these things out. Starting in verse 13 of chapter 5, it says, When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and he looked. And a man was standing before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or are you against us? And he said, no, but I'm the commander of the Lord's army. Now I have come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and he worshiped. And he said to him, what, is, what does my Lord say to the servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandals for this is the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now Jericho was shut up and inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've given Jericho into your hand with its king and its mighty men of valor. See, the first thing we discover here is that spiritual vision comes from being in God's presence. It comes when we're in God's presence. Now, at this moment, Joshua again is looking. 
And what he sees here is he sees things that are very difficult. Now, we know from other spots how Joshua dealt with moments like this. Joshua is in, in this space. He's looking, he's saying, God, how in the world are we going to do what you've told us we're going to do? How in the world are we going to get past this wall? Here in God's presence, he's looking at this situation. And, and we've all seen movies like this because what happens here is that he's asking God this question. And then all of a sudden, you see a movie like this where the, the, the person's focused in on the adversary or focused in on something. And they've got their scope set and they're looking down. They're, they're checking out the, 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 the wall. They're checking out the surroundings. They're checking out the guards. And then all of a sudden, they hear some crackling and they look up and there's someone standing in front of them. That's what happens to Joshua here. And this guy has a sword. That's going to get your attention, right? That's going to kind of say, okay, what's going on? And so Joshua asks a very normal question. Who are you? Are you for me or are you against me? He says right here. And at this point, there's no indication that this guy is an angel or anything. It's just a guy with a sword. Are you for me or are you against me? He asks the question and, and he sees... This thing, and, and here's the key to, to spiritual vision. When you're in a spot and you're not sure what to do, when you're in a spot and God's promised something and there's a wall between you and the promise, the first thing you do is you get into God's presence and you start asking the questions, God, how, why, what's going to happen here? So my next point is that spiritual vision comes by submitting to God's purposes. Now, I love how the angel answers here in this spot when he when Joshua asked the question are you for us or against us and he answers with no now Joshua could have said that's not what I asked you and the angel would have said yes but Joshua what you see and what I see what you're doing and what I'm doing they're somewhat different things what this reveals is that that Joshua was concerned about the battle and God was concerned about winning the war the truth is, is that the angel says, my concern is bigger from what you think and what you are considering is the big thing. I'm thinking bitter, bigger. And this can be frustrating for us because sometimes we think, well, does God care about the little things? Does God care about me if I am going to be just winning the battle? I, I mean, I've got to win the battle here. God, do you care about that? Of course he does. But you know, if we win the battle but lose the war, we lose everything, right? Now let me explain a moment like that this happened in, in my life. See, there's a time in my life when I had received a promise from God and I knew it was from God that my wife and I would have children. We'd be, we'd be parents. Now this is before we had kids, before we had children and, and such. And so we, we had this promise and it was difficult because Lisa and I had a hard time getting pregnant. We had a hard time having children. And even when we got pregnant, we, we lost babies. It was just a very difficult thing. And, and every time we lost one, it felt like we were in a battle. And again, the, the, the war was that I believed what God said. And when we lost one and when things happened and such, and it was very difficult, it, it felt like I, was, I wanted to give up the promise that God had given me. But every time... That happened, I felt like, God, I, I don't want to do that because I need to learn how to trust and hear your voice and listen to what you say, even through difficulty. So again, every time we, this happened, it was, became more and more difficult. And, and it, it came down to the point where we started believing ourselves. We started talking to ourselves. Do we believe God's promises or not? And we kept coming back to yes. And we kept getting off the ground, off the battle. Every time a battle happened, we'd get off the ground and say, we're going to trust God. And finally, when Michaela was in my arms, it was like the greatest, one of the greatest moments of my life because not only did I have a little baby, but also I was holding the fulfillment of a promise that God had given me. It had been a difficult journey, a difficult, many difficult battles, but we had won the war. Because we had learned what it meant to trust God through, fit through no matter what. You see, that's the war. God wants us to win the battle, but God's more concerned about us winning the war. Let's read again here what Joshua does this moment in verse 14b. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped God and said to this man, What does the Lord say to his servant? Do you want to know why Joshua is a champion? Because when Joshua is up against a difficult 
situation, like Jericho, he looks at it and he says, God, what do you want me to see? God, what's going to happen here? He gets in God's presence. And then when God begins to lead him in a direction, he falls to his face and he worships. And he has the attitude that says, Lord, whatever you say, I'll do. That's what makes Joshua a champion. Here's the big question. Are you more committed to winning the battle or obeying God's will? It's a big question. It's a difficult thing, especially when you're up against a difficult moment. And what if winning the battle, what if God's will is different than you thought it was going to be? What if how it happens and how it works is entirely different? What if God says, yeah, you're going to win the battle. It's going to be okay. You're going to do it, but I'm going to do some things along the way that make no sense to you. I'm going to do some things that may make you look like a fool or like you're crazy. Will you still go? Are you still in if, God, if that's what happens? You see, this is a powerful key to having the heart of a champion. This is a powerful key to having vision like God's called you to, to see what he sees. Because as the story goes, we know what happens, right? Joshua's going to win the battle. But God's going to give him instructions. God's going to give him things that he's to say, Joshua, you're going to win, but you're going to do it in a way that you never would have thought possible. You're going to march around this wall seven times. You are, are going to uh, put not warriors on the front lines. You're going to put worshipers. And not, you're not going to put swords in their hands. You're going to put trumpets in their hands. And when I give the word, you're going to worship me and then see what happens. See, that the truth today is that as the people of Jericho are watching this, they're probably saying, those people are crazy. They're, they're nuts. What are they doing? Why? That, that doesn't work. We are here in this wall. They're down there and they're marching with trumpets. It's not going to happen. And maybe they might have said, who told them to do this? And some might have heard, well, I heard Joshua, their, their leaders did. And in that moment, Joshua could have looked like a fool, to be honest with you, because what he was doing there was not based on what he thought the best idea was. See, what he did there is he had listened to God's voice. He submitted to God's will. And God did the work in this situation. See, this tells us that God's more concerned about battles bigger than the one before us. See, listen, taking the land... Winning the battle is not nearly as important as taking our hearts to God. Isn't that so often the bigger part of the battle? Isn't that why we have a hard time sometimes seeing as, as God wants us to see? Because we're so focused on the battle, we don't oftentimes understand that there's a bigger thing happening. Taking the land is not as important as taking our hearts to God, which leads us to the third point, the third thing that Joshua did, is that spiritual vision comes when we believe what God says. Now let's look at it again one more time. Chapter 6, verse 1 through 2. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out, none came in. The Lord said to Joshua, see, see, I've given them into your hand with its king and its mighty men of valor. See, once Joshua believes those words, once Joshua, even though he's looking at the wall, once he believes the word, see, I've given them into your hands, it's game on. But it's not game on until he believes those words, right? See, what's going to happen is next comes the plan, right? Joshua doesn't know the plan yet. He doesn't know how it's going to happen yet. All he's got to do is believe what God says. And then comes the plan. See, that's what's going to happen. And see, this is how this works in, in our lives. God sometimes causes a promise to jump off the pages of his word into your life. A promise. The Bible is full of promises. Hundreds and hundreds of things. God's promise to those who love him, to his followers. God causes a promise to jump off the pages of his book into our, our lives. You see, once we believe those words, guys, it's, it's game on at that point. No wall can stop you. No nothing can stop you once God gives that promise and you believe it. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Will you believe it? Will you believe it even if what you see is a wall? Even if what you see is impossible, 
between you and the realization of that promise, are you going to believe the promise? That's what's facing these people here right now. Now, for every problem, there is a promise. If Joshua doesn't believe this promise, if Joshua doesn't believe what we now know as being verse 2, it's done. Joshua's finished. What we would read about Joshua is that this is where it stops, right here at the walls of Jericho. The promise that could have happened. Now, I believe that God still would have used somebody else to lead his people into the promised land, to, to, to fulfill his promise. It still would have happened, but it wouldn't have been Joshua. And what's interesting is that Joshua, really, his, his decision here, his believing here, affects the lives of not only him, not only his family, but two million people. Rely on him believing what God says here in this moment. When God speaks a word to you, when God speaks a promise to you, do you believe it? See, God won't make him believe his promise, right? He won't, he won't force him to believe it. We wish sometimes God would do that. He just doesn't, right? It's up to him to believe that. See, this is sometimes the wall. This is the river. This is what stands between us and the promise is something like this. And it can be big and difficult. And the truth is, if you don't believe God's promise, you'll never believe his plan. Let me say that again. If you can't believe God's promise, you'll never be able to believe his plan. Because again, what Joshua heard next was the plan. And unless God is in that plan, it's crazy. Joshua first has to believe the promise. And then the plan comes. So my, my big question for you today as we close is what has God promised you? Is God working in your life? Well, the answer is yes. Is God giving you direction and, 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 and a place to go? The answer, of course, is also yes. What has God promised you right now? What's God working in your life and doing, doing right now? See, spiritual vision comes from being in God's presence. Spiritual vision comes from submitting to God's will. Spiritual vision comes from believing what God says. See, I'm, I'm convinced that so much of our problems as believers rests on the fact that we don't get these, th these three things so well because so often there is a giant wall between us and that. Don't you know that God can tear that wall down? Don't you know that God could do something that may sound crazy, but that wall could come down and now we're standing on, on top of this wall this is what Joshua was going to see. Joshua was going to see this wall turn into rubble. That was going to happen, right? Because he believed God's promise. You see, making it a regular plan of your life where this is who, what you do. This is the first thing you do. And you're up against a situation like you might be in right now. It's not worry. It's not fear. It's not always going to happen. How is, how is this going to happen? It's getting into his presence. It's submitting to his will, and then it's believing his promise for you. So again, my friend, what is God promising you right now? Because truthfully, right now, there really couldn't be much more important things for us to consider than that. I want to pray for you today. I want to ask God to, to work in your life and bless you. And you might be listening today. You might say, I know exactly what that is. And you may be facing some wall between you and that. And it's difficult and you're fearful and it's tough right now. And I want to encourage you to stop living in fear. And I want to encourage you to get into God's presence. To get to the point where you submit to his will. And then where you believe his promise once more. If you, and maybe today you would say, I don't have a promise from God. I don't, I don't really know. He's not speaking to me. He's not working right now. Same thing for you. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Get into his presence. Submit to his will. And that just might mean, you just might need to say, God, whatever you tell me, I submit. Whatever you tell me, Lord, I'll do. Lord, I submit to your will. I'm going to bow my knees. I'm going to worship you right here in my bedroom, in my living room, in my PJs. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Let's, let's let God do that. And then let's be people that believe his promise. Amen? Let's pray today. I want to pray with you and I pray over you. And we're going to pray over our, our nation. 
we're going to pray what's happening as well. We're going to ask God for wisdom, and, and, and we're going to trust that God's going to do that. And I'm going to, again, trust that God's speaking to you right now. What can that be? Let's pray. Jesus, I, I love you. I praise you. Lord, I ask you that you would give us spiritual vision. Lord, that we would not have uh, be spiritually nearsighted or farsighted or colorblind or, or whatever, God, that we would have 2020 vision, which comes, Lord, when we are in your presence, when comes, which comes, Lord, when we submit to your will, and it comes, Lord, when we believe your promise. Lord, do that. So I pray for my friends who have a promise, Lord. I pray you would clarify that. I pray for my friends today, Lord, that have no word from you. Lord, I pray that you would get, you would cause something to jump off the pages of the word of God into their lives. And Lord, I pray for each person listening today, God, you would just work in our lives, Lord, vision and understanding to see what you see. Lord, help us to see our nation like you see it. Help us to see, Lord, this current scenario we're in like you see it. Lord, this is not an impossible situation. This is not a reason, Lord, to get angry or to get fearful or to get bitter. Lord, it's not a reason for us, Lord, also just to say, oh, whatever happens, happens. Lord, this is, a, this is an opportunity that we have to get into your presence, to submit to your will, and Lord, to believe your promises. Lord, do that, I pray. I pray over our nation. I pray healing. I pray that you would, Lord, cause our nation, Lord, to come back to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And everyone said, amen. Man, have a great week. God bless you. We'll see you again next Sunday morning. Bye-bye. I'm not picking it up. You pick it up. I'm not picking it up. Well, somebody has to pick it up. I'll pick it up. It's clean. Because my honey's clean. Oh, yeah, I'm Charmin clean. That's how I know they're clean. Because my honey's clean. Oh, yeah, I'm Charmin clean. That's how I know they're clean. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Let's talk with Lydia. She's in York mode, savoring dark chocolate and cool peppermint. Could somebody let the dog out? Me? Hi. Come on, bricks. And so has that pile of dirt. Home Depot has all your garden building needs. Measuring tapes. Wood. Hammers. Wheelbarrows. Shovel.
all the things to build the garden of your dreams. Home Depot, how doers get more done.